G'day and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to tell you a story of trials and tribulations, of blood, sweat and tears, and snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Yes, I'm going to talk about the sunroof. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content with this project car and my own cars, Mercedes CL500, an SLK350, and a Maserati Gran Turismo, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So in this episode, we're gonna tackle the worst part of this car, which was the sunroof. Now, for those of you who've been with the uh, channel for a while and have been following this project car, uh, back in about December, I had this serviced by CMR and we noticed that the sunroof, well, it wasn't working from the switch, it wasn't working. And also um, the sunroof lid was slightly uh, dropped down at the back um, as if it wasn't quite closed properly. So it was, wasn't watertight. So we initially thought it might be just a cable or a motor problem because the, um, the way it works is that there is a cable that goes all the way back here through the snakes around down the, the C pillar into the boot where there is a motor and then that motor pulls the cable backwards and forwards and that basically slides the sunroof forwards and backwards. Essentially quite simple but um, uh, difficult to, to work on. So the first thing that you have to do uh, when you do any work on a sunroof is you have to open it, except we couldn't open it. So I was stuck because I was faced with looking at this and uh, there was no way in from the top. Uh, I tried pulling the cable from the boot and, and, you know, with pliers and trying to lever it out and it was just completely jammed. It wasn't going anywhere. I didn't really know what to do at this stage. So I decided the next thing to do would be to um, take, the, take the headlining out. I knew I was going to have to get to the, the main sunroof uh, mechanism uh, somehow and the only way I was going to get to that was by uh, taking the um, headliner out. You firstly have to take off the uh, sun visors, uh, rear view mirror um, and the uh, handles on each side. Um, these centre pillars which are still not quite back in place yet. I need to get some adhesive to stick that back on with. Um, and this one is, is not there at all. That's, that's in the back seat waiting to be uh, stuck together. Um, then there are a number of clips up here which tighten the headlining to keep it nice and smooth. Um, there are little clips around the sunroof edge here which um, slide in. There's kind of metal bars on the headliner which slide into the um, slide into the sunroof mechanism here to hold that tight. So it was a pretty involved job to get this um, headlining out. So this mangled octopus here, it actually does have eight legs, um, is the headliner from the 260, which I finally managed to get out. One of the big problems that I had is the first step in a lot of these instructions for removing the headliner is open the sunroof fully. Ah, problem, can't open the sunroof. That's the whole point of doing this. So there has been some damage unfortunately, which is in inevitable because I had to had to get stuff out because I couldn't access screws that you would normally access when you are um, when you've got the sunroof open. A little bit of damage, unfortunately, but that's to be expected. We can fix that anyway. But the good news is that we finally have access to all of the important stuff to get the, to get the uh, sunroof working again. Now, this is gonna be 
this is going to end up being a full sunroof removal i think it's the only way i'm going to be able to do it so i don't have the facilities i didn't have anyone else to help me with this so i thought the best thing to do with this sunroof cassette when it was all exposed uh, was to buy a couple of ratchet straps so i put one ratchet strap across here through the doors and, and over the top did another one in the back there um, ratchet strap across there and then i was able to undo all the screws around the whole metal sunroof um, enclosure and gently lower it down onto those ratchet straps and i could see then immediately uh, the entire mechanism and how it needed to be fixed as you can see what i've got here is i've got the entire sunroof um, on uh, ratchet straps here so I've just lowered the whole thing down rather than taking it out. I just lowered it down gently onto those ratchet straps and I was able to have a look at the interior. So when I did manage to expose that mechanism, all I could see was this tangled mess. I could see that the, um, the, uh, the cable had um, burst its way out of its guide um, tube. Uh, it's, a, it's a tube which has got a slot in the top to allow the moving uh, plate to go backwards and forwards. That tube was buckled and bent and twisted and I was unable to actually remove that tube from the sunroof cassette. The, the tube is bolted to the back of the sunroof cassette here and you're supposed to be able to undo those bolts and just literally pull it straight out of the, uh, of the sunroof but it was so bent and twisted that I couldn't get it out. Uh, so the only option was to do this. This, if you can see this, is the main kind of guide way rail for the sunroof and you can see it's got this horrible well it's got two horrible kinks here and then it bends like this it's just horrific so i had to actually basically dremel that off just cut it off i mean this is useless this is this is dead so i couldn't even get the sunroof open that was the trouble because that was jammed I couldn't even get the sunroof open. And without the sunroof open, you can't do find out what's wrong. And there's something wrong, so the sunroof won't open, but you need the sunroof open to find out what's, anyway, yeah. So I've had to dremel that out, that, that um, actuation cable. Um, so that'll need to be replaced. That is like this thing, this whole thing here goes through from here into the boot which is where the, um, the actual motor is. So what I thought was a simple motor problem has ended up being a complete nightmare. Um, but at least now I've got the sunroof open, I can start working on it um, and refurbishing it. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, much, much harder than I anticipated. So once I dremeled that out, um, the next thing was to decide how to get that fixed. And um, I went over to my guys at Peninsula Sports Cars, actually, where, where the MG uh, gets serviced. They, had, uh, they do quite a bit of fabrication, obviously, for old cars. And um, I gave them the, the metal tube that goes up through the C-pillar and into the back there, plus the bent bit of tubing and said, can you either refabricate this buckle tubing um, and then braze it or weld it back on um, or fabricate something new? And uh, they had it for like three weeks, I think. Um, and they miraculously were able to completely straighten out that um, tube, almost so you would never know it had been bent. And they welded it perfectly back to where I dremeled it off. Um, and really it was a remarkable piece of work to, to do it that accurately and that tidily. While this was all getting done, I'd ordered a new uh, cable 
um, a new drive cable uh, from eBay. They uh, are quite common, commonly available. And I also ordered some of the special Mercedes-Benz uh, sunroof uh, lubricant, which is a special um, type of lubricant called Glite Paste, I think. Normally it comes in a big tub, but there are people that sell little jars of it, you know, little cosmetic jars of it for, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. So I got one of those. And as I dismantled all of this um, sunroof mechanism, the, the lift arms, which are the parts that go each side, uh, you'll see these when I'm re replacing them, but the, the lift arms either side um, basically just fell apart in my hands. They are metal, I think they're some alloy of aluminium, but they broke and I, you know, they just came out uh, in pieces. So I ordered some new uh, lift arms from eBay. Um, there were some places that were doing uh, fairly cheap knockoff ones, so um, I ordered those. Um, that was a bad idea, as you'll see. Um, but then I basically had everything I needed to, to reassemble this sunroof and uh, see if it was going to work. And I'm sorry I don't have much video of this, but it was so... It was kind of so stressful that I didn't even want to video it because I was so unsure about, you know, was it going to work? Uh, was I ever going to be able to get this fixed? It was kind of, oh, I just want to get it done. I didn't want to faff around with putting putting cameras up and, and lights and everything else. And I just wanted to get the blooming thing done. So a lot of this early stages of the of the process um, I didn't I didn't take much video before I put the new cable in that tube though I wanted to make sure that all the old grease was out um, so what I did was I got a, a bottle brush um, on a and I attached it to a piece of wire stiff wire that I poked through the the tube and I soaked the whole tube in isopropyl alcohol I'm sure that's wrong but I'm, it seemed to do the job um, and pulled this brush backwards and forwards through the through the whole length of the tube half a dozen times, got a whole load of the gunk out, and then then I was able to grease the new uh, cable and uh, and feed that uh, into the tube, um, greasing it every every like every six inches or you know thirty centimeters or whatever, just to make sure that the whole cable and the tube were were fully greased and uh, will move smoothly. Uh, in that tube. So there was just one little bit of the welding that, that was protruding and um, it, it just needed a, a very fine bit of dremeling just to allow the, the cable to, to move smoothly. But apart from that, it, uh, it fit um, perfectly. So once that was done, <laughs> once that was done, um, I was able to reinstall the, the tube and the uh, the cable in here, uh, and screw it back in. Run the cable back down into the into the boot. Um, reattach uh, the motor, and at that point, I was able to move with the with the switch. With the um, switch, I was able to move this uh, plate backwards and forwards along the along the track, which was remarkably. Uh, a, a big step forward compared to um, where it had been before. So we had motion here. We had motion along this um, tube, which was good. Um, and then um, I had to uh, fit the new um, lift arms. And I fitted these new lift arms um, and managed to get those sliding along okay, um, kind of working okay. And I thought that eventually it would once the, once the sunroof top was bolted down, it kind of holds everything in place. Um, but even when I did that, it, it jammed. Every time I tried to use it, it just kind of twisted and jammed. So I realized that the lift arms that I had bought were not of sufficient quality to, to, to be accurate enough to, to glide smoothly. So I had to abandon those I also decided to get the proper tools for, for locking the, the sunroof lift arms in place. There are two alignment tools that you get from Mercedes. And um, there's a funny story associated with this because 
Um, I had to phone up Mercedes Benz in California, who have the classic support uh, parts and support desk. And so I phoned them up, and um, the guy that I ended up speaking to, who was incredibly helpful, uh, turned out that he lived, you know, like three miles from where I used to live back in the UK. So we both knew, like, where each other lived effectively. It was extraordinary. Phone someone up across, halfway across the world and they used to live three miles from you. Anyway, he was incredibly helpful. He was able to get me these two alignment tools, um, sent them to me in cheap, cheap posts because normally they send everything DHL, but he said, I'll just send it uh, US post because it's they're, like they're 10 grams or something. And um, so armed with the, the proper tools, and a new set of lift arms, which were OEM, which I'll show you uh, in this next clip, um, we were able to uh, put the whole thing back together. So we're taking the sunroof off again because the lift arms that I bought from eBay were so crappy and so lacking in tolerance that it still doesn't work. The sunroof refused to open because they were so badly made. I'll show you in a minute. So that's the four bolts out and then the sunroof should just lift out. So I'll lift it out now. There we go. Then we need to take these three bolts out here and uh, I think they're either eights or tens. There we go. These three as well. You have to unhook the water drain, which is this bit here. There we go. See, these are so shit, they just fall apart. <laughs> That's so crap. They're just not good quality at all. There we go. <sighs> Piece of junk. <sighs> All right, so those parts that I bought, that I just took out, were cheap knockoffs from eBay. And they were sh terrible. So I managed to get the genuine Mercedes-Benz parts. They cost an absolute fortune, and it cost me a fortune to ship them over as well um, from Lithuania or my dodgy parts supplier in Lithuania, but they are the genuine part numbers. So if these don't work, then I don't know what will. So there's a whole bunch of, actually they've got some, they've got some um, lubrication on them, which is really good already. The other thing I have, um, let me just show you. The other thing that I had to buy was this stuff, which is called Gleit Paste or something, it's in German. Um, and this is the specific Mercedes-Benz uh, lubricant for the sunroof. And you need to use this because other types of lubricant will kind of trap dust and clog it all up. So I had to use this for the guide uh, cable. Um, so all that had to be lubricated with glite paste. And it also works on these um, little sections here where you have to lubricate the sections of this which go into the, um, the, the, the channels there. But this also, this already has some lubrication on it, which is very impressive and what I'd expect from Mercedes. And the quality of these just looks like a million times better than the, the rubbish that I had before. So that is excellent.
These things are the little, I don't know if you can see that, but they're little um, special tools that go into the um, sunroof arms and they lock them in the exact right place so that you can then uh, screw the sunroof in and get them exactly in the right position. So now we've got the two arms locked in the right place and these bits on. The next step, we lower the sunroof back on and we align it, and then we adjust these things until they fit, basically. So you kind of line it up, just drop it down into the, the hole, the aperture, and then we then tighten up the screws each side. So this is the fiddly bit, because you've got to get screw these things on in here, and they're inevitably going to drop out of your fingers and go on the floor. Although I have done this about eight times now, so I probably am getting quite good at it. looks pretty good. It looks pretty well aligned. I'm happy with that. <sighs> Moment of truth is approaching actually. <laughs> Will it work? I think the answer is no. Okay. So now that the sunroof is fixed in place, we can take out these little alignment tools from here, like that. And we can actually try it with the motor and see what happens. I can't believe it's gonna work. But anyway, this is the switch which I've had disconnected, which goes on there like that because I've been nervous. I didn't want to accidentally bend anything that was happening here. There's nothing more we can do. There's nothing more we can do. We have original parts. We've got the proper Mercedes-Benz alignment tools, which I have used. We have fixed the motor and we fixed the guide rail. <sighs> there really is nothing else I can do. If this doesn't work, that's it, basically. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get this, this um, thing fixed. Now, if I push this forward. That went up. <laughs> oh. I think it's almost going to work. This sunroof has not worked. Oh my God, it actually 
actually works. <laughs> so I've just got to put the bits back together again. Now, the one thing that doesn't work, I know does not work, is the motor's supposed to turn off at the right point. And that is something in the back that's not working. Um, but um, it, that is something I, I, I will, I think I can fix, but so at the moment I'm just using the switch to control how far it goes because otherwise it will not. I'm nervous actually. Good grief. Good grief. I'm astonished. Well, that is brilliant news. So now I can actually put the rest of it back together again. Oh God, what a relief. <laughs> so just a final demonstration of the sunroof all completely back together again now. So we pull the switch back and the sunroof opens to the back. And we push the switch forward and it opens and it closes to the front. And then we push it up and it tilts and we pull it down and it closes. It occasionally just sticks a little bit going up, but you just push it a second time and it seems to clear itself. I'm not going to worry about that. It's too hard and sometimes it doesn't do it. So that I'm considering calling the sunroof done. And it's taken me, um, Six months, no, hang on, December, January, February, March, April, May, five months, five months to fix it. So that's just about it for this video. Uh, I'm really glad if I can show you here how this now works, it goes all the way back, all the way to the front, and then tilts up exactly as it should, and down, and back. So I'm really pleased with how this has worked out. I never thought I would get it, get it working again after the mess it was in, but taking me five months, but now it's done. <laughs> anyway, that's just about it for this video. Uh, lots more coming up on the uh, 260E. Um, we're gonna get the paintwork done. Um, we're gonna continue fixing the radio, and then we're gonna do a bit of a, a cleanup of the interior and uh, get it all nice and, nice and tidy. So that's just about it for this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.